the storm has now arrived. Well, today's weather in Norwegian. Well, there's no storms about. It's just it has been raining, um, but generally quite cloudy now, and uh, we've got some quite mild and humid air with us. Temperature 17 degrees Celsius. Hey guys, Storm Boy 13. Um, today's episode of weather vlogging, we're going to talk about shelf clouds. Um, just came up with it today. So I know a little bit about shelf clouds, but. What is known about shelf clouds? What I do know is that it is very rare for shelf clouds, not very often, it's a rare occurrence for shelf clouds to form across in this country. Generally, shelf clouds are obviously something to do with severe weather, which can bring in some quite uh, gusty winds, 50, 60 miles per hour gusts, something around there, uh, torrential downpours, some large hail is possible, gobble sized hail, uh, spectacular lightning, um, and of course, it can bring in some flash flooding. Now, not all thunderstorms produce shelf clouds, we know that, or some of us know that. Um, now, how does a shelf cloud form? Now, I kind of know a little bit about how they form. Basically, it's when warm, humid air meets up with the colder, more um, dry air, I would say so myself. They clash in together. You know when they, when the air masses mix together with the low pressure systems, which brings in clouds, and then, obviously, when the pressure drops and the humidity rises, uh, water droplets start to form on these clouds um, and then they come down as when it's too heavy it comes down as some um, heavy rain uh, but what makes the shape though is probably sometimes might be something to do with like how they meet up, how the clouds um, react to these temperature changes and that's why it just come in sometimes in a straight line it may come in like more organized patterns of showers or thunderstorms um, and that's how the results can be you know uh, with shelf clouds, um, they're more common across the USA and more humid countries because you know with the uh, more extreme temperature humidity difference, uh, the more greater the, uh, the storm is and how greater the shelf clouds could have, could have an impact on. Uh, we can get some in the UK but it's more common in other countries, more humid ones as well and then that's how sometimes storms happen as well. So this is having to do, having to do with low pressure system, the humidity, um, probably something to do with the grass temperature as well, that also can count. Um, and um, I'm going to show you a video of shelf clouds and also a bit of more general information about how the shelf clouds form. Okay, so there's some general more information about shelf clouds. As you know, um, a shelf cloud um, is a low horizontal wedge-shaped arcus cloud. So it is attracted to a base of a parent cloud, you know, uh, which is usually a thunderstorm. Uh, but cloud form on any type of connective clouds, um, rising cloud motion, uh, often can be seen in the leading to outer part of the shelf cloud, while the underside often appears turbulent and wind-torn. Uh, so, you know, cool sinking air from a storm cloud's downdraft spreads out across the land surface, uh, while a leading edge called a gush front, this outflow cuts into warm air being drawn into the storm's updraft. Um, as the lower cooler air hits the warm moist air, uh, its water condenses, creating a cloud which often rolls with a different winds above and below uh, wind shear. Uh, people seeing a shelf cloud. Uh, may believe they have seen a wall cloud. This is likely a mistake since an approaching shelf cloud appears to form a wall made of clouds. So a shelf cloud uh, usually appears uh, on the leading edge of a storm and a wall cloud will usually be at the rear of the storm. So a sharp strong gust front will cause the lowest part of the leading edge of a shelf cloud to be ragged and lined with when rising fractious clouds. In a severe case there will be Forts uh, along the edge with twisting masses of scrub that may reach the ground or be compacted by rising dust. A very low shelf cloud, um, as you know, is, by these signs, 
is the best indicator that a potentially violent wind squall is approaching. So an extreme example is Phenon 1. Um, almost looks like a tornado and is actually known as a gusnado. So we know about the shelf clouds. Um, it usually appears on the leading edge of the storm. So as a wall cloud will usually be at the rear of the storm. So kind of know what I mean. Usually with the rain it comes about three miles away from where the actual um, shelf cloud is, you know, three miles difference between when the shelf cloud arrives and the rain arrives. I'm going to show you a video now. Alright, we're just going to look at two videos today. So this is the first one. This was taken in Grand Heaven, um, Minnesota. And this was taken July 18th, way back in 2010. So ignore the not for broadcast, but if you look carefully, you can see a shelf cloud. Look carefully, and you know what I mean about shelf clouds. Imagine you've seen that in your place in the UK. You'd be pretty creeped out. But the main base of the rain, you can tell, isn't actually on the cloud. It might turn dark, you might see some sharp heavy drops, but it's not like constantly pulling it down. You know what I mean? There's still a bit of dry weather, you know, underneath the grey cloud. Under the base of the storm. But you can feel the cooler outer edge of the air. Will be starting to kick in, you know, when warm and cool air meets. Just look at that. You can tell it's not actually raining yet. God, look at that. Eventually, rain will be coming down. Alright, um, location is unknown, but it says Florida severe weather, so I kind of assume this was taken in Florida a few years ago, so... Yep, you can see the shelf cloud.
So we're on to time lapse mode. From the looks of things, it doesn't seem to be moving very quickly at all. There we go, starting to pick up a little bit now. The final thing I just want to quickly show you, I know it's free, but uh, if you can see clearly, this was taken in the UK, in Kent, on July 14th, 2010. Um, this was like a structure pattern, you know, of sometimes with warm, moist air and cooler, dry air meet together, making some updrafts, and you know, quite gusty winds, making the base of the storm. Um, Kent in the UK, Southeast UK, managed to get one of these... Um, uh, textures. So there you go. Uh, learn something new every video. Um, See so now you know about shelf clouds. They can form a couple of miles away from the main base of the storm, or while the um, wall clouds can happen around that storm. You know what I mean? Uh, with the rain comes immediately after it, whilst the shelf clouds, you know, uh, two to three miles, you know, where it usually produces a lot of drier weather, but eventually um, they give way to some heavy downpours and uh, quite gusty winds, you know, where the updrafts pick up and with the warm air and the cooler air collides. Um, so, yeah, that's all I've got to tell you about shelf clouds today, but quite a good amount of information from there, so... Alright, if you want me to do any... well, which web vlogging episode do you want me to do next? Comment below, it's in the description as well, and uh, we'll find out. Uh, so on episode 10 now, so which 11th episode would it be next? Well, find out soon enough. Uh, if you want me to do any Extreme UK weather events, uh, as well as that for the rest of the week, comment below, it's in the description. And if you want me to do any global weather forecasting, whether it's in another country, or in the UK, in which town or city, comment below. And it's in the description as well. Alright, thanks for watching, I hope you found it interesting, hope you learn a lot from it. I hope so. Did you? More videos to come soon. The storm and the shelf clouds are now out.